Hey squad, welcome back. And today I feel like making another chill beat. I've got my cup of coffee, so let's get into it. Okay, so I wanna base the entire production on just these two elements, a one bar drum loop and four bars of piano. Let's repeat the drums for four bars. Just using these elements, we're gonna build the foundation and then add all the layers on top. Now the tempo at the moment is a little bit fast for what I'm aiming to achieve. So I'm gonna drop it down from 85 to 78 BPM. However, before that, I wanna make sure I've set these to flex. So let's switch on flex and we switch on polyphonic here and polyphonic down here. Now they've been analyzed. I'm gonna drop the tempo to 78. Now this is the second time I've uploaded the video and unfortunately I got hit with a copyright notice so I'm unable to play back the piano section as it is. So I'm just gonna mute it for now but that's not gonna be a problem going forward. Next thing I'm gonna do is bounce these in place. So right click, bounce in place. I'll make sure normalize is switched off and same down here, let's bounce in place. These are my two new time stretched audio recordings. I can get rid of these two for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is pull this piano recording over here to the track section and drop it onto Quick Sampler Optimized. Now here's my Quick Sampler. And make sure you check out my videos on sampling in Logic Pro. It's a must watch and it will really help you take advantage of using the fantastic samplers in Logic. Anyway, the next step we're gonna take with this sample is to go to slice mode. And as you can see, we have all of these slices here and it's all based on transient mode, which is what we're gonna stick with. We could change this to beat divisions or equal divisions, or we could do it manually, but we're gonna stick with transient mode for now. And using my MIDI keyboard, I can now play these different slices. If I hit C1, that's what I get. And then D1 and so on. However, I want to map the slices to the white notes only on my MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose white here. So as you can see now, all of the sharps have disappeared and all of the slices will now be on white notes. Just makes it a little bit easier when working out my patterns. Also, there are too many slices for my liking. So I'm going to take out this slice right here. So if I was to right click on the second slice, delete slice marker. And now what I get when I press C1 is this. And if I press F1, that's too short. So I'm gonna delete the G1 slice. So I have a much longer F1 slice. Another way of adjusting things is to change the sensitivity right here so we don't end up with so many slices. I really don't need this many for this particular production. So I'm gonna just pull this back like so. And only the strongest transients will actually end up with a slice. Then I can go in and manually put slices in like so. Okay, I can always adjust the slice position as well. So let me go away, adjust the slices exactly how I want them, and I'll come back with the finished slice arrangement. So here's my finished slice arrangement, and you can see they're mapped on these keys right here. Now we can get rid of this piano region and track, and if I play back the beat now, I can work out different patterns with my slices. and so on. So to save time, I'm gonna work out a pattern that really works for me and then put that down. Okay, so I've come up with two four bar piano sample sections. But before I play this back, let me show you something on the sampler. I've switched gate off, which means whenever I hit one of these notes, the entire slice will play, even if I remove my finger from the note straight away, like this. The other thing I've done is I've changed the polyphony from 16 notes to mono or monophonic, which means there'll be no overlapping of any of these slices when they're triggered. Now let's have a listen to what I've come up with.
I'm now going to bounce these down as two separate piano parts. So this one I'm going to bounce as piano A, and this one as piano B. We can now get rid of these MIDI regions and just work with the audio regions. Now the next thing I'm going to do is work on my drums. Okay, so for the drums I'm going to go a bit old school. I'm going to pull this back so we've got one bar of drums. Let's have a quick listen. In this region right here I've got all of the elements I need. I've got my kick, my snare and my hats. And just like with the piano section. I could always pull this over here and pull this into the quick sampler, optimized. And now I've got my kick, my snare, and my hat. But I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to go old school. I'm going to work on these four bars of drums. Right click, come down to split, and choose remove silence from audio region. Now I've got all of my kicks, my snares, and my hats separated. Next thing I'll do is I'm duplicate this track and a second time. Now I'm going to identify all of my kicks, my snares and my hats, and then put them onto individual tracks. So let me show you how I'll do that. So this is a hat. This is a snare. Hat another hat and a snare. And once I've separated all of these out, I can take the next step of manipulating all of the individual drum parts to suit the groove and the feel I'm looking for. Let me go away and arrange the drums the way I want them, and I'll play you the drum section in just a second. Okay, so I've arranged my drums out, I've color coded them as usual, and then I'm gonna bring in the piano section as we play along. Now I'm gonna send my drums as usual to bus 10. And on bus 10, I've got some effects already for the to process these drums. I've also got some effects on, on the actual drum tracks themselves. So on the actual drum bus, I've got this fantastic Waves Puig Tech EQ, which I'm using to attenuate both the bottom end of the drums as well as the top end. And also, I'm using one of my favorites, which is the Waves Maserati GRP to add some glue to the drums as a single unit. And then I'm using this great little isotope vinyl plugin to add some old school texture and feel to the drum section. You'll find links to all of the plugins shown in this video down in the description where you can try them out completely free of charge. Now listen to the snare and the hats. I'm going to take off this spreader on both of them. Then I'll bring the spreader in and you'll hear the stereo width I'll get by using the spreader on these two individual drum parts. This is a really cool Logic plugin. The last thing I'm gonna do with the drums like right now is add some delay to the actual drum parts. So I'm gonna open up the region inspector and come here and I'm gonna cause the drums to be delayed by 16 milliseconds or 20 ticks. Just a slight shade of delay, but that's gonna help with the groove. And every other thing I add to this production is gonna be delayed by that amount. So the piano as well by 20 ticks. Okay, so it's time for me to lay down my bass line. And for those of you who've been asking, I'm using a Warwick four string rock bass on this particular track. So 
So let's color code the base region. And I'm gonna be processing my baseline with these two plugins right here, the Maserati B72 and Logic's compressor using the vintage VCA circuit. Now I'm gonna do two more things. Firstly, I'm going to add some delay to this bass guitar part, same amount. And secondly, I'm gonna to come to the drum track and I'm gonna come over here and enable the groove track. Make sure you check out my video on how to use the groove track feature in Logic Pro. I'll have a link in the description. Now I'm gonna tell Logic to lock the bass guitar to the drum groove. Now it's time to add those extra layers, do the arrangement, and then a quick mix down. Okay, and we're back. Now, if you've watched any of my production videos before, you'd know that I generally follow wherever the creativity leads. And I've added a number of additional layers on top of this production. And I've used quite a few different plugins as well to shape the tone of the production. And in a minute, I'll play back where we've gotten to so far. But let me show you a couple of things that I've done. So on the piano, I've added this really cool plugin by Waves called the Greg Wells Piano Centric. And, and let me show you what it does. So I'm gonna loop this section right here and I'm gonna bypass. Now I'm gonna use a lo-fi piano preset and let's have a quick listen. I've added a doubler and some delay, and this works quite well within the overall arrangement when I bring it when I bring it all in. The other thing I've added is a keyboard section using another Waves plugin, which is the Electric 88 Piano. Let's come down a bit more. I've added an acoustic guitar section right here, and on there I'm using this Maserati acoustic guitar plugin, as well as some H delay. Here's the dry sound. And now processed. And then I've added some strings and some horns, then quickly arrange things so that they work well together. On the master bus, I've got these processors to give me more analog retro characteristics to the sound. Then finally, I'm sending everything through this IM pusher to give the track a bit of lift and punch for a quick master. Now the links to all of these plugins will be in the description where you can try them all out for free. So let's just play back the production so far. Hopefully this has given you some ideas on how you can put together a quick production using Logic Pro, the quick sampler, as well as some additional plugins to shape the characteristics of the sound. Remember, if I brought you value, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment. It's always great hearing from you. Let's play out. Until next time, I'm Deuce, I'm out, peace.